So, we're back again, and this time we're going to talk about enumeration, storage classes, and we're going to talk about, if I'm not mistaken, scope rules. So, let's hit it. First, we're going to talk about scope rules because scope rules are very important. What they do is they give us uh, be a better idea of how the program is reading and operating. So, within the scope of this program, this class itself, integer value exists, correct? But that exists within the scope of main. This is what we call a local variable to the main function. Now, is integer value a local variable? No. It is only local to main. But because main is our root function, that means that integer value is actually global to all functions in the program. Because all functions, if you remember from my call stack video, all functions are being called from main. That means that if I put a variable in main, the scope of variable exists within the main. And within every other function that main is either giving its values to or calling. So in this case, integer value is also available to, to uh, the square root function that I'm calling from PCH class. It's a global variable because it exists in the main. You also have what's called local variables. Now what's a local variable? A local variable is exactly what it sounds like. A local variable, it can exist in another function, but it is only available to that function. And once that function is finished calling, and the call stack looks at the, the uh, stack, uh, the, the, the stack form, the stack frame, and says, oh wait, Max, you have to go back to the main when you're finished, int result goes away. As a matter of fact, remember when I told you, parameters are also variables. They are variables, but they are parameters, meaning that they're being used to fill automatic, param automatic variables being used to fill the function Max. Those also go away. They don't remain, and the main cannot access them. This is the premise behind scope rules. That's really all scope rules are. So now that you know this, let's take this a step further and talk about enumeration. What is enumeration? Or better, what is an enum? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, an enum is a uh, of, of a, a object that can store uh, multiple values in it that can be called at any given time. You can think of an enum almost like an array. Or, if you understand JavaScript or other languages, think of an enum like an object. Now, I've used the word object a lot, but I have never used object in the context that it should be used. An object is merely a thing which has a key value pair. Meaning that if I call that object and I ask for the value of a key, it should give it to me. Let's take a for instance. Let's say, for instance, we have enum year, and we have the years, uh, the uh, months of the year in this enum. So let's go ahead and put the months of the year into this enum. Oh man, I am just the greatest typer, typist, whatever. Jan. All right, I believe, not dev, I believe that I've got them all in there. Okay, so our enum is created. Let's go ahead and put our semicolon at the end so it doesn't throw any errors. And there, we're good. Let's th build this and see if it works. It does. It succeeded. Okay, so now that it succeeded, let's go ahead and use the values in the enum year. Now, remember, enum means enumeration. Enumeration literally just means a compilation of something. Now, if I just called these months straight from the enum, I would get specific values based on the position of that month. So, if I said something like this, and let's go ahead and erase all of this for a second, okay? And if I said enum year, and then I had, so I'm giving, I'm, I'm calling the enum year uh, array type, all those values, and then I'm going to put it into a value, into a uh, a thing. So I'll say year. Oh, I'm sorry, not year. Let's give it a, a name that means something. Uh, today equals sept. Okay. I don't want t. I just want p. 
Okay. Now, let's print today and see what we get. So print F. What do you think I'm going to get? Well, I'm going to get the number that sept is, the position the sept is in. And because everything in computer science starts at zero, sept is in the eighth position, meaning that this ran correctly. Now let me try to put that in reverse. Let's say I said sept or sep equals nine. Can I do this? Yes, because in enumeration, I can treat it like an object and everything, every element in the enum has a key, which is sept on the left side and a value, nine on the right side. So if I called the value, would I get the key? Let's test this theory. So instead of saying today, or instead of saying sep, say nine. And then I would say F. See if that runs. It might not actually, I might have the wrong, the wrong syntax. Zeros, that is, that is true, F is float. Uh, S, shooting in the dark here. That might not work either. Nope. Let's uh, stop that. I'm going to try one more time and then I'm going to look it up. And then I'm going to look it up. Didn't work. Wait. Nope. Didn't work. All right. Give me a second. Oh, I'm actually doing that the wrong way. What I should do is this. If I called Sept, so Sept is in the eighth position, but September is the ninth month of the year. So I gave it the value nine. Now, if I called September again, would it give me nine? Or would it give me the uh, position that it's in, in the enum? It should give me the value. Nine. And that's the way that works. I called the key Sept, and it gave me the value nine. If SEP has no value, it'll give me the position that SEP is in. I had a brain fart there, I apologize. This is the way enumerations work and they're very powerful uh, data types. They can be used to do a multitudinous amount of things that are very important to us. Holding those key value pairs is in, in integral in being able to pass data back and forth. This is another way that we can use a quote unquote variable object to do things that variables themselves may or may not be able to do. But let's take it a step further. What are storage classes? Well, a storage class for the most part is a, st is a static class or a class itself uh, that is a default storage class for all local variables. That's really all it is. Now, what does a storage class uh, consist of? How does it look? It looks exactly the way that we've been making our classes. The, the idea of a storage class is the same idea of any other class that you've created. So in looking at this uh, main, if I said, oh, I don't know, int miles equal uh, zero or nothing, I, in a sense, have created a, uh, a auto or a static storage class. Now, let's go a step further because this is kind of cheating a bit. What does a static storage class actually look like? What does an auto storage class actually look like? What does a registered storage class actually look like? Well, it looks something like this. This is called an, give me a sec, that, why did I get an error? Yeah, global scope may not have this storage class. Oh, my global scope may not have that storage class. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Oh, that can't exist there. I apologize, but it can't exist there. Now what's wrong with the printf? I don't have a semicolon. Now what did I just do? I created a variable, and this is the whole purpose of a storage class. I just created a variable that will never go away for the lifetime that the program's running. This is very important. Remember when I said that after that 
right now I'm in the PCH class. I went there on purpose. Remember when I said that after this function fails or finishes, it will no longer allow its variables to exist. But what if I created a variable that never dies? What if I created a variable that I can use for the lifetime of the program? You can do that with storage classes. And more importantly, you can do that with a static storage class. So in this case, instead of using an auto, let's go a little more specific and let's talk about static. So if I said static storage class, what I'm essentially saying is I want the integer month to never go away. I want it to exist for the extent of this program. And as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of the main because the main is a function and I, that would make it local. I actually want to do it like that. That's what I was trying to do earlier. That in a sense means that that variable does not exist within the context of the root function. So when the, the call stack looks at the stack frame to see if a function is available, it doesn't the integer month does not exist in that call stack. So when the call stack dies, when the, pr the program ends, that's when int month nine goes away. So instead of saying nine, let's say set. And then what I want to do is I want to call that here. Um, uh, there are no strings in C. This one's a tricky one. I'm trying to think of how I would. Okay, let's do this. Five. And we'll call this month instead of today. And then we'll put set back here because we're not even going to use that. This isn't this isn't running at all. All that's running is this and this. So what I should get is five. As a matter of fact, if I said, well, no, all I should get is five. What do I get? I got five. Now, for the life of this program, as long as this program is open, which it's not, it's done. That fun that variable exists. Once the life of the program is over, that variable disappears. But that's different from the main and the max function that we have over here, because in those functions, their local variables only exist within the context of that function. And like I said earlier, once that function is done, that variable goes away forever. Now, I know some of you might be saying, you know, what? I've been developing for a long time, doc dev, and I will tell you that's not true. Well, I will tell you that it is true. Because in a lot of contexts, you will find if you actually do a runtime event log of what is happening, you will see that those variables disappear if they are not within a specific storage class, most notably storage class. I hope this was helpful. Um, once again, today was about enums, storage classes, and um, I'm going to lose my train of thought. Scope rules. These are actually very important, especially when you're trying to move between classes and share things that other classes may or may not need. I hope this has been informative to you. Click the like button in the bottom if you like the video. And if you want more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Doc Dev. You guys have a good one. Ciao.